It's five o'clock Wednesday. Welcome to Joyful Echo with Jean and Kathleen on Carolina Catholic Radio Charlotte, where we gather together as sisters in friendship to echo God's love. Now here are your hosts, Jean and Kathleen. Hello, happy Easter. We are still in the Easter season. I am Kathleen. I'm Jean. Welcome to Joyful Echo. We're so glad that you're here. We have a special guest as we continue our series on hope. Yes, and ladies, I know a lot of you have been listening to the series on hope, and we thank you for that. And we're coming to the end, so I'm hoping, and all hopes, that you (laughs) grab some little gold nuggets that are carrying you through your week. But I want to introduce our next guest, Christian Gaduti. He is a seminarian in our diocese, uh, the Charlotte Diocese. We have a lot of listeners that are outside of our Charlotte Diocese. And he's been a seminarian for how long, Christian? Just finished my fifth year. Just finished his fifth year. Mm -hmm. And you are studying in Ohio? Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio. So how many more years before you are ordained? God willing. God willing. Two more years. Two more years. Two more years of theology. Two more years of theology. That is awesome. But I have this little love love. Christian was my neighbor growing up. (laughs) I've known Christian when he was growing up. When he was growing up, well, I was growing up too. Um, I've known Christian since he was eight, mm-hmm. right? You moved well, in with mean, four. I was four. four when I moved into the house. You were four. four. That's right. That's right. And he would play with my sons and my children, and they would all forty kids be in the cul-de-sac mm. playing. And Christian was very competitive at sports. <laughs> still, still am. Still. <laughs> now he's competing for souls. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and he's also the um, sponsor for my son's confirmation. Uh, my son, John Christian, is his sponsor. Mm-hmm. So it's good to watch you grow up, Christian. I'm glad I had a little pos- positive influence on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We had a lot of fun. Yes. So we are so glad you're here with us today. And I know you've been praying about the topic of hope. Is there anything that has come to you in prayer that you want to share first? Or Kathleen, do you have a, another question that you would like to ask before we dive in? I okay, so I do have a question. I always have questions. Um, she does, and she gets good ones. Thank you. Um, so my question is this: for for listeners who are thinking about hope, what is the difference, or how would you distinguish between hope, wishing, and trust? Beautiful. Wow. Wow, it's a good question. I got to think for a second. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can, well, I'll start with maybe hope and wishing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hope is based on a promise. So when we hope, we hope in something that has been promised to us. And we hold firm to that promise. We trust that that promise will be fulfilled. A wishing could be more of something that hasn't yet been promised. Something that God hasn't directly said he would give us. But that perhaps through our prayers, he wants us to ask so that he can give it to us. Mm -hmm. But it's not said that he would give it to us. So perhaps there's someone in your life who's suffering of a sickness and you can wish and pray that they be healed and it could be God's will and that might be granted you or it might be God's will that that's not the case. And so you wish, but God hasn't promised you that he's going to cure them of, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. God has promised you that um, he'll always be with you. He has Mm -hmm. promised you that he will deliver you from evil. You can hope in that. And you can trust that what he promises, he will fulfill. And that's based on who he is and uh, our faith in him and who he's revealed himself to be. So trust, I guess, sort of said it. I mean, we're hoping in some, we're hoping in something that God has promised. We're trusting in the person who promised it. Um, so there are fine little distinctions, at least I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, but really important and well articulated Mm -hmm. in the difference. Thank you. I hope that helps people because I think that can trip us up if Mm -hmm. we start to think about not being let down, if we place our hope Mm -hmm. in the Lord that he he will. And yet it doesn't mean that every desire that you have Mm -hmm. is going to be fulfilled Mm -hmm. because you can hope in the Lord. So that distinction I think is really helpful. Thank you. Yes, and I love the word wishing. I haven't heard wishing in a long time, and I like that word because God delights in our wishing he does. as well. And if he doesn't fulfill that wish, he's got a better plan. Exactly. He's got a better plan, and the plan may be delayed for something better coming. Mm-hmm. It's, he, it's always better. It's always better. <laughs> so you're wishing, ladies, 
is um, a little crumb of the better that he has coming your way. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's beautiful. And he doesn't want to fulfill the wish because he's got the better package coming, right? right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, and that, that leads, uh, unless you, do you have another question? Nope, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was my big one. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess one thing that I guess just a bit ago sort of came into my mind and heart is that as Christians, but also as sinners, oftentimes we fail to persevere in hope. Um, the nice thing is, is that God, it being who he is, the promise doesn't depend on your hope. Mm. And Can so you say that again? The promise doesn't depend on your hope necessarily. And what I mean is that you can always, having failed to persevere in hope, you can return, you know, ask for forgiveness for not believing and not trusting in God and return to that hope. Mm. Because when you fail to hope in God, it's not as if what he's promised, he then takes away. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it'd be a little different at the moment of our death when our succession of choices has ceased. But during this life, if I fail to hope in God in A, something that he promised, A being an example. And then at some point, maybe a year later, I, re I say, I'm sorry, I should have trusted you. I wish I trusted you. Mm -hmm. You can return to that hope mm -hmm. because the promise is still there. Mm -hmm. um, the promise of his love, for example, mm -hmm. the promise of his mercy, the promise of his protection. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a comforting thing. Um, I think... There are many areas which we all struggle to hope in. It's not easy. It's probably, well, it is a very difficult virtue, um, especially because hope is in things that aren't seen. Mm -hmm. So when we don't see those things, we can get discouraged and we can stop hoping. Mm -hmm. But always remember that just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not still there. That's right. And our previous guest spoke to the fact that... Um, Always ask the Lord to renew your hope. Fill me with hope, Lord, head mm -hmm. to toe. And Liz Kelly was even speaking to the past. You can borrow my hope. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. I, I love that. that. You can borrow my hope. We borrow the hope of the saints. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, there has, there has been times when hope has been really hard for me. And I have just had to say, I hope in that you're still hoping for me. <laughs> and the person praying with me or leading me or whatever that when I had lost hope in some whatever area that this person was hoping on my behalf. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, I was still hoping because I was hoping through them. That's right. Yes. Yeah. She, That's she right. did talk about hoping for hope. Right. And, and even sometimes that it, it eludes us. Right. And he will always answer that prayer. Yes. Mm -hmm. He will always answer that prayer because it's something in our soul that needs to be healed. And that's a hundred percent guarantee. We can rest in that. He always wants to heal us. Yeah, we just mm -hmm. want it sometimes now. <laughs> and the way we Tuna want shipping, it. please. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's true. Oh, it's man. true. So you're opening your bravery. Yes. I was praying the other day, just sort of thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Try not to think too much because, you mm -hmm. know, I wanted the Holy Spirit to be spontaneous. But I did like this prayer a lot because... It just really captures hope, I think. Mm -hmm. It's in the breviary, which if you're unfamiliar, is the prayer of the church prayed uh, by, well, all priests and religious pray it five times a day. Uh, they take a promise to do so. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the lady are encouraged to, not obliged, but encouraged to um, join in. It's sort of the cry of the church. And they're praying the for the church. They're exactly. For, ladies, they're praying for even... People outside of the Catholic Church, they're praying for all of Christ's praying people. Mm -hmm. And I can testify to this. We will be at a birthday party, and my dad will say, I've got to go and say my prayers. He's ne he, by, by that vow of that promise mm -hmm. to go pray for the church. So he goes away for 15, 20 minutes. Charlie the dog follows him, sits at his feet, and he does his prayers for the people. So everybody is covered by the church five times a day. That's hopeful. <laughs> so what did, what well, did you... So each, 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 you know, there's morning prayer, mm -hmm. obviously prayed in the morning. There's daytime prayer, can be mid-morning, mid-day, mid-afternoon. There's evening prayer, night prayer, etc. And each of those ends in an oration, a prayer. Okay. Like you would hear at the end of Mass. Sure. So this one struck me, and I'll just, I'll just read it. We can even pray it too. Father, you restored your people to eternal life by raising Christ your Son from death. Make our faith strong and our hope sure. 
May we never doubt that what you will fulfill, may we never doubt that you will fulfill the promises you have made. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And uh, the, the line that really just hit me was, may we never doubt that you will fulfill the promises you have made. And uh, that's really been the essence of hope for me in a lot of my struggles um, because you can't see what you're hoping for. And it's it's nice to rest sort of on that rock of God being as faithful as he is because even in ourselves and in other humans, we encounter a lack of faithfulness, but God does not break his promises. I, can we make yeah. something very clear? Yes. Because I find this, being a daughter of the priest, a priest hearing from women, and Kathleen may hear the same, having a daughter who's in religious life, that there is this misunderstanding that ones that go into the religion, religious life don't necessarily suffer with this hopeless. They have so much faith. All suffer with hopelessness from time to time. Is that correct? I mean, yeah, in in a sense, yeah. I mean, all all battle to, all battle to hold firm in their hope. Can't say I don't know everybody. I can't say everyone's despaired. Mm -hmm. if that's what you, I don't know. No, I don't I'm think, not saying despair. I don't, but we that's all what I mean. I don't to... think you're saying despaired as no. hopelessness. I think you're saying they've wavered in their hope. Or mm -hmm. the enemy will still attack. I think is the exactly. point. You still have to be ready and engaged in the battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think maybe an example. Um, you encounter evil and I mean this has happened to me you just see so much evil in the world and you have who God has said he is to be mm. and that you see but you see all of this evil and you don't necessarily see God as he is mm -hmm. and you you have this interior battle of is God is God who he says he is and is he going to fulfill what he said he would fulfill and that's when we make the choice to hope but I think maybe what you mean in terms of wrestling with hopelessness is you know choosing like these occasions in our life that happen frequently where we either can hope or despair mm -hmm. and it's a it's a struggle to choose hope sometimes because mm -hmm. we're going to see things in our life that sometimes just don't make sense. Not at all. <laughs> just don't make sense. And that is where we make that amendment. I am going to hope in you, Lord. Declarations mm -hmm. of hope. Yeah, you really got to choose it. And uh, I think maybe your question was, do, do you, people in religious or vocations like this mm -hmm. struggle to choose that hope from time to time? And I, I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but knowing myself and knowing my brothers, I think that yeah, evil is evil, and it's confusing and dark, and it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And in those moments, it's, it is hard to choose to hope, but we do it. Right. It just doesn't, you know, it's not, you're a choosing feeling. to hope in a thing that's not seen. So you right. just, it is like faith. I often struggle between the distinction between faith and hope, but I'm still learning. So <laughs> in time. We won't put you on the yeah, spot here. Don't. Not. <laughs> and I wanted our listeners to listen because um, that's helpful to them to mm -hmm. know that we're all struggling together. Mm -hmm. Just because our vocations look differently doesn't mean that we don't all struggle with sometimes, okay, Lord, I've got to choose hope right now because I don't feel very hopeful. <laughs> right. Yes. Well, and. Pretty soon we're going to take a break, Christian, but before we do, I just want to kind of set your mind to something that came into my heart as you were speaking. Sometimes that harsh evil, as, as challenging as it can be to hope, in some instances it might be easier to wrestle with that than it is a lukewarm heart. So encountering someone who's just, eh, about the faith and maybe knows their faith, was raised in the faith, but at this point in life is just sort of in a lukewarm state. I have found that to be a real challenge in, in having a conversation about hope because it's person's not hot or cold, as the mm -hmm. scripture says. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you can think about that while we're on break. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Come back and join us.
Carolina Catholic News, Attention Teens in the Charlotte Diocese. Totus Twos, or Totally Thine, is a week-long summer camp for children and teens held at the Cathedral of St. Patrick from June 19th to the 24th. The program includes daily mass, songs, games, Eucharistic adoration, lessons, and tons of fun. Kids from any parish are welcome to participate. There are two groups. First through sixth graders will meet Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 2.30 Middle and high school program will be held Sunday through Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. The cost is $30 per child. Register at www.stpatricks.org forward slash T-O-T-U-S dash T-U-U-S. Duke in Altum or Put Out into the Deep is a retreat from June 27th to July 1st for young women ages 15 to 19. Do you know where your life is going? Have a desire to grow deeper after the role model of Our Lady? You're invited to join the sixth annual camp at Belmont Abbey College. The cost is $150. Deadline to register is June 22nd. Go to charlottevocations.org or Sister Mary Raphael at mraphael at rcdoc.org. For the Carolina Catholic News, I'm Pam Cullen. God bless y'all. Hello, I'm Elsie Spady, the host of Healed and Restored. My show is dedicated to making a difference in people's lives by showing them how the healing of the body, mind, and spirit is possible and available to all God's broken children. I invite you to tune in every Sunday from 5 to 6 p.m. Each week, I invite a different guest, and together we discuss all the different facets of healing. Thank you for tuning in and for supporting the work at Carolina Catholic Radio. God bless. Welcome back, ladies, to Joyful Echo. I'm here with uh, Kathleen and Christian, and we are talking about hope. We ended the show with a question that Kathleen asked, and I couldn't tell you what it was. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, you, I know, because she's very articulate, and, it, and I'm just in awe of her beautiful way of speaking. But it has to do with lukewarmness. <laughs> So we're going to ask Christian to w- expand on that a little bit. And during the break, the Holy Spirit took us in a different direction. And I think it's going to tie into all of lukewarmness about our sweethearts as moms. Yes. And and seeing our children venture down this avenue, especially graduating from high school and in college, college into a lukewarm territory with their faith. Christian? Uh, so, I mean... In summary, the question was more or less, I think it's some, well, you asked me to comment on it. Sometimes it seems somewhat easier to talk about hope uh, or engage in hope with someone who is or has despaired Mm -hmm. and then someone who is, you know, excelling in hope versus that person who just is so lukewarm, hope is not even crossing his mind. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when you talk to him about hope, He's like, uh, why are you talking to me about this? This doesn't matter. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was sort of what you were mm-hmm. um, saying, and you were asking me to comment upon it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think that, I mean, most people, you know, they want to live for what's important to them. Mm-hmm. And what that looks like, I guess lukewarmness is sort of, living in this sort of state where nothing's, I guess in terms of hope, nothing's really important to you. Um, that, is, that is like you don't intensely care about something. Mm-hmm. And, and in relation to hope, these people who maybe are just lukewarm um, about any sort of difficulty or their life choices or whatever, there's not that intensity of care or that uh, sincerity or that 
uh, process of discernment and thinking about things and evaluating things. And so it can be hard to engage them because they just don't really mm-hmm. care. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't really know if I'm giving the best no, comment I think that's, on this. No, I think it's Versus beautiful. someone who doesn't care. I mean, versus someone who doesn't care about hope, but it's actually really because they care about something so deeply that you can meet them there mm-hmm. and talk about it. There is some sort of passion in their heart still, and that's why it can be easier to redirect that passion to hope mm-hmm. um, versus someone who is just sort of, you know, logs that just had water poured over them. Mm-hmm. You know, at least the person who's raging with anger and hate has some l- fire in them or uh, energy or they care deeply about something and it's causing them lots of pain. Mm-hmm. And you can meet them there and engage them in that versus the person who's just, right. you know, mm-hmm. not even on fire, I guess. Right. So what advice would you give to either someone that's in that state right now listening? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you've just kind of all right, whatever, or they're, they're, they see their children in that regard. Is there something as being a young man that you have found being one of eight that maybe your mom did or something you could share from your own personal experience that has helped you or others that you've seen get back into some sort of passion? Hmm. Either no way or yes way, yeah. <laughs> you know, but you can work. And Jesus says that in scripture. I can work with someone that's, like, totally against me, and I can hot work, or cold. Yeah, hot or cold. But the lukewarm, he says, I just want to spit out. I want to vomit. I think it says, spit them out of my mouth like vomit. Yeah, yeah, it's harsh, but those are the words. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess if you're that person, I guess my thoughts are maybe to, to prayerfully consider what's important to you, mm-hmm. and to start living for something Mm -hmm. um, instead of, you know, just remaining in this state where you just sort of do whatever. I mean, there's goodness and spontaneity. What I mean, though, is that there are those people who are spontaneous and do whatever the day brings along, Mm -hmm. but they're doing it all for Jesus. Mm -hmm. They're doing it all for the ones they love. They're doing, you know, soldiers serve their country, you know, for others or because they love their country and that's their passion. Some people work out because to them it's really important to be healthy. So they're doing it for that. So maybe consider what you're living for um, would help. Because mm-hmm. I think I think some people, at least a lot of people my age, they start out in this period where there is nothing where they're really living for. And they're just sort of swept up with what people tell them to live for, Mm -hmm. you know, make a lot of money or uh, have a nice girlfriend or get married. It could be who knows what it is, be the top of your business or, you know, play video games all day. And they just sort of go along with what other people are saying. And maybe at some point in their life, they realize they're not happy and then they go through this whole drama Mm -hmm. and they want to start living for something to give themselves some purpose but I don't know I guess my thoughts are to consider what you're living for mm-hmm. um, I think know. that's a good question I think questions to look in inward what am I living for can put you on a direction mm-hmm. send you on a path yes I, I agree I agree I I would like to circle back before we we take our time in prayer circle back to what we talked about earlier and what you brought up Christian about that connection between hope and a promise that the Lord has made. I'm guessing that there are listeners who they've forgotten that God has made some promises to them. And so their lack of hope at this moment in life is not so much a rejection of the Lord as it is just forgetting that he's offered some really amazing promises that you want to hope in when you remember that Mm -hmm. he's given them. So if you wouldn't mind reminding our listeners and us too of some of the amazing promises that God's offered. As a precursor to that, I think it's funny. There are some times in life that like we don't know we want until they're presented before us. Mm -hmm. 
uh, as a kid, you probably didn't know you wanted a chocolate chip cookie when you woke up until you saw it on the counter. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I want that thing. Mm -hmm. And it's part of our nature. We see you good and we want it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're right. Perhaps there are just many people who have never been shown the good news. What, you know, what's good? Mm -hmm. um, Jesus promises eternal life. We're all going to die. Uh, you really got <clears> to <throat> think about that because there has been no one in history that has not died. Right. That's a guarantee. So <laughs> the Lord. we're all going to die. And our Lord promises everlasting life to those who remain faithful to him. Mm -hmm. I mean, every, you know, he promises that he will eventually put evil in its place and evil will be no more. Mm -hmm. Right now we have to engage in battle. We have to, you know, engage in the evil principalities and powers and dominions that Paul talks about in the world. And just, we have to fight through prayer against people with really evil and twisted intentions mm -hmm. that are steering the ship of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and our Lord promises that when he comes again, that will all go away. Mm -hmm. And, what will remain is a garden of, you know, I mean, analogously speaking, a garden of Eden of pure joy, goodness, service to the Lord, love, harmony, etc. All those types of things that he promised he would give us all. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, he promised even in this life to, to taste a little bit of heaven, That's his right. joy, his peace. Another thing we can't escape is the cross. Um, you know, if you if you. You start suffering the cross, and the first thing you want to do is run away. It's sort of a natural reaction, mm -hmm. but no one can escape the cross. No one can escape evil. Mm -hmm. And our Lord actually promises peace in the midst of that. That's right. And uh, I think that's a really attractive message of the gospel. It's a, actually a message that has brought me to prayer a lot in terms of when I'm suffering the cross and that peace isn't there. Mm -hmm. Going to him and being like, you know, you promised this. What am I doing or mm -hmm. how do I find it or what do I need to do to be disposed to receive it? Any kind of question, you know, but he does promise peace and joy in the midst of the cross. It's, you know, when Nero was emperor and he was burning Christians on crosses and feeding them to the lions. The thing that struck people was that they were happy as they were dying. Mm -hmm. I mean, that isn't, that's just a supernatural grace given. That is. That's right. Um, I know a priest who went to Auschwitz and he said it was the darkest place on earth he's ever been to. I mean, the oppression of evil, he could just mm -hmm. feel it in his soul. But he, when he went into the cell where Maximilian Kolbe was martyred, he said it was one of the happy places, happiest places he's ever been to. Mm -hmm. And just that stark contrast that in the midst of the evilest thing, there can actually be peace and joy. That's right. Not in the way we might think. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, God goes beyond our wildest dreams. But it is supernatural grace. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus says, I give you my peace, it's divine peace. Mm -hmm. It's not peace that you and I can share with each other. It right. is divine peace. So you're right. I, Liz, our previous guest, said when, when you're in the dark Gethsemane, Jesus doesn't fall asleep on you. And I loved that. Right. We fall asleep on him so often, but he, he never does. He never does. He never falls asleep. And there's so hope. With us. Yes. There's great hope. And I think at this point, this is a good segue for us now to having our time of prayer, because what you're speaking to is the fact that we have to take these thoughts to the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, that our struggles, when we're not experiencing the things that he's promised to us. He's the one that we go to to say, what's happening? What am I, right. as you said, what am I doing? Because it's not that he's <laughs> neglecting his duty. So it's mm -hmm. always, it's always on us. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't we start our sure. prayer time? And Christian, if you just want to join in as okay. the Spirit moves. Yeah. In the name the of the Father, Father, and of the Son, and, and of the Holy Father. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you in great thanksgiving. We are honored and blessed to be praying with our listeners right now as we all come together to seek your guidance and your love, your peace and your joy and your hope, Lord. We thank you. We thank you that you are a God of hope, a God of promises, a God of joy. 
So we just surrender our hearts to you right now in this prayer time, Lord. We ask the Holy Spirit to guide this prayer. You are welcome here, Holy Spirit. Anoint all of our hearts so we will um, just benefit from all the graces that you want to pour into our spirits right now, Lord, our souls. Father, we know that hope is a gift. It's not something that we practice in the same way as some of the other virtues. So we're asking as expectant and trusting children that you would increase your hope in us. You would increase in us the virtue of hope and remind us, call to mind through your Holy Spirit, all the reasons that we have to hope in you so that that fire can be kindled. I thank you, Lord, that you are present here. And we just want to bring to you any woman right now that has walked away from you because she has not felt your presence in a very long time. We ask you, Lord, to bless her with an encounter of your presence. That she sometime today will know ever so gently that she is so loved by you and that you've not given up on her that you are wanting her heart fully, completely to fill her with great love and that she is worthy and beautiful. We thank you for that, Jesus, that grace. We thank you, Lord, too, as we recollect in silence the very presence of your grace. Christian, is there anything you want to pray for the women for? Um, just any mothers particularly who are struggling to hold fast in hope for salvation of their children. Jesus is with us and he hears our prayer. We make this prayer in his name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Christian. You're welcome. Thank you. Here. Thank you. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. It's been a blessing. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm happy to be here. Good. <laughs> All right, ladies, tune in next Wednesday for a new episode of Joyful Echo. This will be our last episode before the summer break, and we go to some of our best of. Best of. Yes. <laughs> Have a blessed, filled week. See you next week. <laughs>